So Pam, you were on that defense team with Alan Dershowitz in that first impeachment trial, helping to secure an acquittal for President Trump. Can you tell us what was your insider take on that trial? You know, Kelly, at the time, we knew very little about that much about Hunter Biden. And and the whole basis for them to try, try to impeach President Trump was a phone call he made with President Zelensky, now the whole world knows President Zelensky, of course, um, from Ukraine. And it was about Hunter Biden. And he thought some things didn't seem right. Hunter Biden was on the board, um, an oligarch's board. um, And Joe Biden said that that they weren't going to get any money unless they fired a prosecutor who was looking at this oligarch's board. I mean, it was crazy stuff. And now, you know, President Trump said it was a perfect phone call. And now, look in hindsight, of course it was a perfect phone call. Now we know even so much more about what Hunter and the Biden family were were doing. And yes, I got to know Alan Dershowitz. I still talk to Alan all the time. And, you know, Kelly and Nikki to digress a little bit back then. It's funny how just the world keeps changing. Alan's Professor Dershowitz, his big philanthropy, he buys, he gets people to help buy ambulances. You ready for this? For Israel. Wow. And now... After everything happened Mm. on October 7th, I get chills. I I called him and I said, wow, look what your ambulances are doing now. Look what they're doing for our world right now, Alan. Mm. So that man does a lot of good. And you know, Alan's a Democrat. He's a lifelong Democrat. He's a brilliant professor. And and he he sees, he saw in that trial what they did to President Trump and he sees what they're doing now. And of course, President Trump was completely vindicated more so than ever now because now we know so many, they had buried the details. We couldn't get, Nikki, we couldn't get half of those documents. We couldn't get a fraction of those documents during this impeachment trial because they were trying to bury him because they were going after Trump. And and now everything that's coming out, we still all talk, Jay Sekulow, Alan Dershowitz, our whole team, Pat Cipollone, and we're like, can you believe this? You know, all these documents that they buried and they knew were there, but we couldn't get them because they wanted to remove them from office. That was impeachment round one. And then we keep going. (laughs) Yeah, right. It just keeps going. And that's what I want to ask you about next. But I want to follow up on what you just said. There have been so many things that have come out, whether it's the the Russia collusion, which has ended up being a hoax and all these things where, you know, you look back and you go, actually, Trump was right. And they just keep coming after him trying to, you know, I think in psychology, don't we call this projection where yeah. you've got an issue and then you just project it on the person you're mad at. And the, the psychiatrist is like, actually, it's you. <laughs> and yeah, and it, that's the problem. Crazy. It is. And it's I feel like it's just so it's such a concerted effort and it's so diabolical um, what they're doing and what they've been able to accomplish. But, you know, that man is so strong and um you know, he should have been sitting in front of the U.S. Supreme Court yesterday, yet, yet he was having to sit in, in, a, in a courthouse in New York City um, on something absolutely ridiculous. And it's, so it's just it's nonstop. But, yeah, I'm glad you brought up impeachment. I call it impeachment round one, um, because that really um, he said from day one, it was a perfect phone call. I had the duty to question what was happening. And now knowing what we did, of course he did. Right. Well, and this lawfare is continuing. So now there's this this imminent trial happening in New York. So they're trying to criminally prosecute him for paying, allegedly paying for a non-disclosure agreement with Stormy Daniels. And there's so much, um, I would just say, questionable conduct around what the prosecutor is doing. Even this Boston University law professor wrote, I think, a the three of us are lawyers, so we would say a pretty compelling analysis in the New York Times, which is not a conservative paper, saying that this is a legal embarrassment for the prosecution. Yeah. And I was yeah. really persuaded by it. I know you were, too. What's your take on this trial and how you think it'll turn out? Yeah, so, so this this is a case that, that um, the Justice Department years ago, years ago, declined to prosecute. The Involving Southern federal District crimes. Of- So it's Southern. Yeah. The Southern District of New York also declined to prosecute the statute of limitations, which means for non-lawyers, you know how long you have to to, to bring a case has expired years ago, years ago. So now Alvin Bragg and the the New York D.A., they they come into this case and they, they basically airdrop in a special prosecutor who is from the Biden administration. You can't make this up. I mean, it's such a concerted effort to get Donald Trump, they bring him in. And 
at best, and there are, are no criminal charges here. Uh, we can talk about that in a minute, but but they take a misdemeanor and they have to log, tack it on, bootstrap it on to 34 felonies just to make it within the statute of limitations so they can bring this, this case years and years later. There's no reason in the world to bring it other than to keep him off the campaign trail. And they're being successful at that right now. They're not going to be successful ultimately, but they're being successful at that because he's having to sit in that courtroom every single day. And, you know, the, the, the prosecution star witness yesterday, a guy named Pecker, who was um, head of um, the National Enquirer, said we did non-disclosure agreements all the time. This wasn't Donald Trump the president. Donald Trump was the celebrity. We did him for Arnold Schwarzenegger. He, he rattled off names and names of all these celebrities because that's part of business in the business world when you're a billionaire and people come at you and they're accusing you of things. And so, and, and, and you know, it's it's very detailed. And of course, Michael Cohen is the star witness against President Trump. And, his former and lawyer. He, his former lawyer. So I don't know how they... they Attorney yeah, that client violates. privilege isn't applying here, number one. Right. Right to, to my fellow friends and attorneys. And, you know, he comes in and says all the salacious stuff that he told him to pay her off. But then Pepper, yesterday on the witness, or the, this last week on the witness stand, last week on the witness stand, he comes in and he says, he says, listen, um, Donald Trump didn't know that Michael Cohen paid her off. He had no idea when we talked about it. And Pecker hasn't even talked to Donald Trump since 2019. So th their case is falling apart, but they don't care. The goal was to try to embarrass him and to have him sitting in a courtroom, which they got him. You know, it's a criminal charge, as we know. It's not a civil case. You can't come and go. He has to be sitting in that courtroom. And, and then to take it a step further, you know, as, as attorneys, we know, you know, I prosecuted before I was attorney general for 18 years. And the gag orders used to be on me as a prosecutor. Prosecutors aren't supposed to be talking about the case because you're not supposed to hurt the defendant. All the rights here belong to the accused because he is innocent until proven guilty by a reasonable doubt. Yet they're letting Michael Cohen, that witness, he's out there every day trashing Donald Trump on TV. So they put a gag, I've never seen a gag order on a defendant in my entire career. They put a gag order on Donald Trump saying he can't talk about the court. He can't talk about crazy he can't talk about the main witness who's out there trashing him every single day you can't make this stuff up and really as lawyers it's, it's, it's a shame because this is what people are seeing they see this isn't how our justice system typically works